once you've done all of these things, lots of conditioning, lots of reps, you can move into a dog that is completely off leash healing. Vex heel so that you can walk without a collar. Good. Without a collar, without a leash. And when he gets distracted, hey, 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 just a simple verbal correction can help pull his focus back to you. Good. Hi guys, Ethan here with Standing Stone and this is Vex. Today we're going to show you three biggest mistakes that people make trying to use our easy lead. And then we're going to show you the four steps to be able to take your dog to complete off-leash healing. This is your first time to the channel, guys. Click that subscribe button, wherever it is, and uh, then you won't miss any of our new and upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's get started. The first mistake that people make using our easy lead is putting it on wrong. Come on, buddy. We're gonna show you right here. Step number one, you wanna go ahead and clip this to your dog's flat collar. Our collars have a built-in O-ring just for this purpose. Then you're gonna take and run the leash around the dog's neck and then thread the handle portion back through that O-ring. Now, when you do this, your dog needs to be healing, uh, excuse me, the leash needs to be slipping off the outside. So if our dog is going to heal on our left, like we typically do, this is, you're gonna see this slip off the outside. The mistake people typically make is they put it on backward and then you have a slip off the inside. And when you have that slip off the inside, you don't get the proper release to, that you need. It binds a little bit more and that's not going to be ideal. So if we're gonna heal him on the right, it's again slipping off the outside. This is designed to be able to heal dogs on either the left or the right. You just have to set it up correctly. So that would be mistake number one. The next is once you go through the first step here, so we're gonna get this reset up. Again, we've got it clipped. We're gonna roll around, run the handle through the ring, and we're gonna do our halter style portion with the, the flip up over their muzzle. When you tighten this down, this would be mistake number two. People try and move too quickly. The most important part and the hardest part of this whole healing process is going to be getting him used to this up over his muzzle. This is completely new and different, and we need to take the time applying just a little bit of pressure and help him to get comfortable standing here before we ever even think about moving. Now, once we've got him comfortable standing, then we're able to ready, then we're able to start actually moving and walking just a few baby steps at a time. Good. Now, the last mistake that we see people make is they actually use this to manage pulling as opposed to being a progressive training system, like we're going to talk about here in a minute, to move toward complete off leash or just even if your goal is loose leash healing, you can get there in just four steps. Now, most people that I've seen allow their dogs to continue to take them for walks, but when you have our lead on, it, it allows the dog to not pull quite as much. And they're like, oh, this is amazing. The dog's not pulling as much, and this is so much better. But what ends up happening over time, and this is why it's such a big mistake, is the dog can actually harden to any type of pressure. So they do it long enough, and then this no longer means anything, and they can just pull right through it. So. Those would be your three biggest mistakes that people are making. And now we're gonna show you the four steps to getting from a dog that's pulling you all over the place to complete off-leash healing. Now, step number one, and I'm gonna show you this again because this is very, very important. We need to put this leash on properly. So we're gonna to clip to the flat collar. Just like I said, this is one of our flat collars and it comes with a perfect O-ring, custom plate, all the other cool stuff. We're going to run the handle through the ring, and I'm gonna keep him on my left side. So now I've got this slip set up so that it is centered, the ring is centered behind his ears, and then we're slipping off the outside. Everybody see how that works? Perfect. Now we're gonna go ahead and flip this up over his muzzle. It's pull a little bit of slack out, make one twist underneath, and then that goes right up over his muzzle. Now we're gonna cinch this all down and then we're going to give him some slack. 
we want to make sure that there's not constant tension on the leash. If you have constant tension on the leash, he never gets a release or he never gets the reprieve to know this is what I'm doing. This is what it should feel like when I'm doing it right. And then when I make that mistake, either pulling too far ahead or changing directions or anything that he's not supposed to do, he's going to feel that really subtle um, correction from the leash itself. But if it's constantly tight, he never gets to feel um, the difference, which would be no pressure to say, yes, this is right. So it's pressure on, pressure off. And you have to make sure that you're getting the off portion. So heel. Hey, we're going to start walking. Now, once your dog, he obviously understands how to heal, but this is the way that we taught him how to do it. We're gonna start walking, and once you have a dog that is comfortable and confident walking by your side with very, very minimal corrections being needed, you can use those light tugs when you change directions, but very, very minimal. You are able to, with the leash like this, you're able to um, build a behavior of not pulling. Once we get past that, he's to the point now that as soon as we throw this on, he's walking perfectly, which shouldn't take very long. I'm talking maybe a week or so of sessions, depending on the dog. Then we're gonna move into our next step, which is going to be, and I did that really fast, because it's so easy. I just pulled this slipped part off of his muzzle, and now we have just a standard slip style leash. Again, that slip needs to come off the outside so that we have proper release of that. And we're gonna throw our e-collar on him. Good. Now, as we put this e-collar on, this is gonna take us to our second portion, which is we've already taught him, you know, a good non-pulling behavior. And now, come on. We're gonna to start to collar condition the behavior. Anytime we feel like we need to tug on the leash, we're gonna overlay the e-collar at the same time. And this is gonna build a response to um, the collar and basically build collar conditioning to heel. So tug and tap on the collar at the same time. Good. Here we go. Anytime we change directions or we, he gets too far ahead, tap, tap, tap. That's what you're thinking. Anytime I have to pull on the leash, I'm going to tap on the collar. And this is going to, with reps, condition the behavior of he can respond just to the collar. That would bring us to step three. So we're starting the collar conditioning, and now we have a dog that's completely collar conditioned to heel, and we can pull this back through that ring. And then we have just a standard four and a half foot long leash that then we can make all of our corrections here. There's no more tugging. Anytime you feel like you need to tug, you would just tap on the collar. Vex, heel. Now we're walking completely loosely. Good. We need to tap on the collar if we need to change directions or do anything else. And then step number four, once you've done all of these things, lots of conditioning, lots of reps, you can move into a dog that is completely off leash healing. Now, I'm not going to recommend that you do this down the street or anything like that, especially most places have leash laws, but worst case scenario, you have a completely loose leash and it doesn't build, everybody thinks that collars um, build reliance or they don't always want to have to use a collar. Well, if you put the right time reps effort in, you can move to a point where you have a dog that fully understands Vex heel so that you can walk without a collar. Good, without a collar, without a leash and when he gets distracted hey 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 just a simple verbal correction can help pull his focus back to you good yeah you're doing a good job you're doing a good job buddy yeah that's not a good job heal yeah heal good yeah pay attention good job uh, 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 uh. good we're gonna go ahead and clip him back up, this little goofball. Thanks guys, everybody for watching. I hope that these tips have helped you and that you can head with your dog down in the right direction of no longer pulling on the leash. I'm Ethan, the guy with the pink gun, and this is Vex. We'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.